once the JSC makes recommendations, the president has no option but to formalize the appointments. The court rules, the court's rule that the president cannot change the list, review it or reject some names. He cannot decide to cherry pick from the list of nominees. Both courts ruled that the president must appoint the persons as recommended and forwarded to him by the JLC since the, pres the president has no residual legal power to question or reject the names recommended to him by the JLC for appointment as judges in accordance with the constitution. The constitution does not denote any mandate to the president to perform any other act upon receipt of the names recommended by the JLC except to appoint them. But uh, courts categorically held that the refusal by the president to appoint the 41 judges was a grave violation of the constitution. Having reached that decision, the court in petition number 369 of 2019, consisting of, ju of five judges, directed the president to appoint those judges within 14 days. The Attorney General, as is now his practice, filed notices of appeal, but he has not done anything to prosecute appeals even from those decisions. Neither has he obtained any stay of execution in either of those cases. The legal position, therefore, is that the President is obliged by the two court valid orders, or orders to appoint the 41 judges within 14 days of the decisions of those two courts. The President's disregard of court orders does not bode well for our constitutional democracy and is potentially a risk for anarchy. Besides the court orders, I have challenged the executive to table before the chairs the alleged information of lack of integrity it has against some of the 41 nominees. Some of the individuals the executive claims to have adverse information against are serving judges. If the executive's allegations are true, these persons should not then be serving as judges. However, no evidence whatsoever has been availed to the JLC, both during the, the interview process and after. Unfortunately, this disregard of court orders by the president is part of the pattern by the executive. It is important to remind Kenyans that in addition to these two specific orders, the executive routinely disregards court orders. For example, despite, existing, despite an existing court order, the government recently evicted over a thousand families from the Kariobangi area of Nairobi, all in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. Additionally, the government has willfully neglected to settle dozens of court decrees issued by various courts against the government. These court decrees amount to almost one billion by conservative estimates. And they go back several years, not, it's not recent, they go back several years. None of these decrees arise from personal uh, injury claims by victims of road, uh, road traffic accidents caused by government vehicles. In some of these cases, the victims have suffered paraplegic injuries. Yet, the government has failed to settle this decrease. Because they cannot afford 
to pay for nursing care some are carried and told by their grandchildren to bask in the sun at, and at times forgotten to be ruined on out there attempts to compel the accounting officers in the relevant ministries are always rebuffed with the contemptuous interpretation how can we expect God to bless our nation when we are so callous with the most desperate in our society? There are many other court decrees and orders which require the assistance of police to execute, which have, which have been neglected and disobeyed. As a result, when the creators are unable to realize the fruits of their judgments that they have obtained from courts. Your Excellency, I want to address the, uh, the President personally. Your Excellency, you know I have respect for you as our President and I have told you that. You also know that I have for a long time now and successfully sought to sought an appointment to discuss this issue with you leaving me with no option but to raise the matter, matter through this public statement it will be a direction of my duty if I do not raise Wanchiku's agonies in my domain at least let her know that I share in her frustrations. It is for this reason that I must remind you, Your Excellency, that you swore to defend and uphold the Constitution and the laws of Kenya. The Constitution, as the two multi judge court cases held, requires you to appoint judges recommended to you by the Chelsea which you have refused to do. The laws of this country include valid court orders. It therefore behoves you to appoint the 41 judges recommended for appointment by the JSC as ordered by the court without any further delay. As Your Excellency has pledged in the past, you respect the rule of law. I urge you to now demonstrate that faith and respect the rule of law by complying with those two court orders. In so doing, you will also alleviate much suffering for Kenyans who are seeking justice in our courts. In the same vein, I request Your Excellency to instruct the Attorney General of the Republic of Kenya to take stock of all the court decrees and orders issued against the government and to immediately begin a process of satisfying them. It greatly undermines the rule of law for the government to act in deviance of court orders. And this pattern puts a great risk to our constitutional democracy because it risks the contagion of lawlessness. The government should be in the forefront in upholding the rule of law. The government cannot demand of its citizens the obedience of the law. It is itself disobeying with abandon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That's my statement. The other one will get a uh, written